Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be showing you how to use UI in Unity's Entity Component System. Now I'm basically going to be using the same project as the previous video where we can basically spawn in this radiation cloud and it starts kind of having an effect on these capsules here. And you'll see that over time they eventually get destroyed. However, this time around, we actually have a health bar that's going to be updating um, that's going to show you essentially how long these capsules have until they get destroyed. And then up at the top, we have the capsule counter of how many capsules are being destroyed. Now, you don't necessarily need to see the previous video to know what's going on here. However, when we're going through the code, I'm going to be talking about singletons a little bit. And if you do want to learn a little bit more about how these singletons work and how they're set up in this specific project, Go check out that previous video. I'll have a link up in the card as well as in the description below. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use UI in Unity's Entity Component System. However, the concepts here basically apply to any mono behavior, um, any component that is in regular Unity. If you wanna integrate that into your game, you can use these same concepts to basically set any values or trigger any behavior on mono behaviors. And the way we're going to be doing this is using something known as managed data components. And if you did find today's video helpful and you learned a thing or two about Unity's entity component system, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity ECS and other parts of their data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or come join us over on our Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. I'll see you there. Now then, for the basic project setup, you'll see that I have these capsules basically spawning in the air and randomly falling down. And then I have this little um, health bar kind of pooling system set up. So you'll see that these you know health bars start getting enabled. And then when we need some more of them, we can just spawn in some more of them. Um, once again, if I hit the S key, we can start essentially destroying these capsules. And then once they get destroyed, you'll see that they all basically just kind of disappear there. And then our counter increments. So that's kind of the uh, result that we're going for. Let me show you how this is all set up. And by the way, all the code and project files featured in today's video are going to be available using the links in the description below. All right, so I'm going to start off by showing the time to live data component. So basically, you can see that we have an initial value and a current value here. And of course, this is the value that is going to decay when our um, radiation cloud is present in our game. Now, essentially, what we want to do is we want to represent this value on a slider. So if we were to just come in here and say public slider, and then we can just call it slider, you see that we don't actually get any errors within um, our IDE over here. However, when we come over to Unity and let the scripts compile, if we go into the console, we start getting some warnings, um, basically just saying the uh, time to live data contains a field of Unity engine at UI slider, which is neither primitive nor blittable. And so basically, because this is a reference type, it's not allowing us to add it to um, this data component struct here. However, we can actually do one thing. We can change this from a struct to a class and then this is going to be a slightly different version of the I component data, which is known as a managed component data, which is allowed to have uh, references to, you know, things like sliders, game objects, different mono behaviors. And so that's kind of like the basis that we're going to be using is these managed classes so that we can access the mono behavior features that we want to in our game. Now we can come back here and we see that the uh, previous error is cleared out, but we still do have this error um, saying that we can't use the manage I component data using burst um, and scheduling jobs with it. So that kind of brings us to sort of a main concept that I want to bring up, and that is basically the separation of managed and unmanaged data. So kind of the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of our, you know, complex calculations of calculating how long this component has left until it is destroyed inside this system. And of course, this is a really simple example, but you know, you could kind of think about if you have some really complicated system and you basically just end up with a value, you know, we can do all the complicated system stuff in a burst compiled and scheduled job. And then we can have a separate system that basically just goes through and does the easy stuff like updating the UI. And then so we can kind of have the best of both worlds where we have the high performance when we're doing our calculations and then we can still interact with the mono behavior stuff in a slower system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and clear out the slider from here and change this back to a struct. And I've actually created a separate class here for the health bar UI data. You see that this is a public class implementing the I component data, which makes this a managed component data. 
And on here, I just have the slider. And then of course, I'm also uh, using a little bit of an offset so we can just have this slider sit above the capsules in our 3D world space. So now how does this actually work in practice? Again, this is just the same system that I used in the previous video. So go ahead and watch that if you wanna learn about a little bit more about how exactly this works. Um, but basically we're just doing our entities dot for each. We only need a reference to the time to live data. We don't need anything to do with the UI component right now. And then here we're doing, you know, the complex calculation of just decrementing this uh, time to live value by our delta time. And then here, this is a little bit different than the previous video, but basically if the time to live value is less than zero, we're gonna go ahead and add on a destroy capsule tag. And I did make a video recently about using tags in Unity's entity component system. So go check that out if you would like to uh, learn a little bit more about using tags in ECS. So now then I'll come over to the update slider UI system. You'll see that I'm updating this in the late simulation system group. The reason for that is because we want this to run at the end of the frame where once the value is already calculated, we can update the slider accordingly. So you see that inside on update here, we're just doing an entities dot for each. Now the first thing that I pass in is this manage data component, the health bar UI data, it's called health bar UI data. And you'll notice that I do not have a ref or in keyword before that. So on the translation and the time to live, I have in keywords before these because they're regular data components. Before manage data components, you do not include a ref or an in keyword. And then you'll see, you can basically just access this, you know, as you'd expect, just like kind of in regular Unity C Sharp programming, where I'm just doing, um, go into the health bar UI data slider on the transform.position, setting it to the value of the entity plus this offset here. Then you'll see when we actually want to set the value of the slider. Again, we just do health bar UI data dot slider dot value. And we'll set this equal to the uh, time to live's current value divided by the initial value so we can get it on a scale from zero to one because the slider is just from zero to one. And then the last thing to keep in mind is you do need to run this on the main thread and it also must be ran without the burst compiler. So again, just make sure you um, include those two options there. If you don't have them and you go over to Unity, it's gonna give you a message saying that you need to have those before um, actually proceeding. And so again, you'll see that these sliders are completely full. And then when we enable the radiation cloud here, you'll see that they all start decrementing over time until they finally go ahead and destroy the capsules. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show off is just um, how we actually increment this one single tin counter up here. It's pretty easy and pretty similar to do, but I'm actually setting this up in the destroy capsule system. Again, we're updating this in the late simulation system group. Um, in the on start running, I'm basically just grabbing references to some singletons. Again, check out the previous video if you wanna learn a little bit more about that. And then inside the on update here, I'm gonna be doing an entities dot with all destroy capsule tag. Again, this is just filtering out by uh, a tag. So anything with the destroy capsule tag, we're gonna run this system on. And then we'll do a dot for each. We're going to need a reference to the entity itself and then a health bar UI data called health bar UI data. Again, we do not have the ref or in keywords before this because this is a managed data component. Now in here, we'll just grab the slider off the health bar UI data and then we can send it back into the pooling system because we no longer need this. On the entity command buffer, we're actually just gonna go ahead and destroy the entity. The counter data, which is a single tin that we grabbed up here, we're just gonna go ahead and increment the value on that so the we can keep track of how many capsules have been destroyed. And then finally, on the counter UI, which is a separate managed data component than just the uh, base counter data, we're gonna go ahead and update the counter text to capsules destroyed and then the counter data's current value. Once again, this system has to be ran without burst and on the main thread. And so just one last time, we'll go ahead and enter play mode and you'll see that the capsules start spawning and falling onto the ground here. Hit the S key and you'll see that um, once you know the radiation cloud is in here, the health is going to go down on these until they're actually destroyed. And then you'll see the capsules destroyed counter is incrementing in the top. So anyways, that's just about all I have for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two about using UI and other mono behaviors and components in conjunction with Unity's entity component system. So if you did find it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and other things in their data-oriented technology stack. 
Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. Come join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. And with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.